how are you doing this week, Tara? Not too bad. How are you? I'm getting a new stove. I heard. You're getting rid of your fashionable 70s avocado stove. I'm, I'm just, it's, it's, it, there's that moment in life when, when you become the sort of person who gets a stove. I'm the sort of person that instead of shopping for clothes and makeup lately, I've been shopping for furniture. Like the app I'm most likely browsing now is Wayfair instead of Sephora. It's, it's not, it's not right. I know we're old. Well, to be all right. In my defense, I'm going to show you what show you all what is being replaced in this house because Jesus God Almighty. Uh, you have Jesus God Almighty in your house? Wouldn't that be something? Now, th this is what's getting replaced. This is a a forty year old avocado green magic chef stove. Ooh. from the 1970s. You'll notice here it has such features like a missing burner, Ooh. a stove handle that's kind of at an angle, and it does not close all the way, even when it's turned on. So how do you cook anything? I have not attempted it yet. This thing is scary. I'm scared, I'm literally physically frightened to turn this. Th I, I tested it a little bit when I first got here, and I was like, no, that's enough. It'll oh. just, like, rock it into space. As you can't close it. When you close it, it'll turn on, and it'll heat up, but you can't close all the way. So... I mean, I my mom, when she used to use the broiler, used to leave the oven open, like, six inches when she was broiling meat. I was never exactly clear on why. I'm but... also, it doesn't, I'm not sure how to turn it off. Cause when I tested it and I turned all the knobs off, some of the lights stayed on for a while. Oh God, it's a chief sentience. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not, I don't want this in this. This is scary here. I think you're going to have to bring in a young priest and an old priest and Get rid of the spirit. Yo, man, that that's that that is Best Buy's problem. They're delivering <laughs> it. They're hauling it away. That's their fucking problem. Okay, it's, gonna, it's, the guys from Best Buy are gonna come in and be like, "Wow, that's that is that, that's that's their fucking avocado." Dan, Dan thought Dan thought it was annoying that we have an electric stovetop in the new house, and he prefers gas. He thought that was a problem. Okay. But at least it's black. Yeah, he. I don't know. I don't cook, so. I'm getting I'm like, a black one, too. I'm like, stove, get hot. Put water on. I'm He's gonna... like, well, gas is much more precise. And I'm like, stove, get hot. Put water on. I'm getting a black one. I'm getting a Batman stove, too. It's Batman. Batman. <laughs> Darkness. No parents. Yes, exactly. Batman stove. Oh, Dan says he could make a bomb out of your stove. So there you go. Gee, I'm really glad I'm getting rid of this thing. We're watching the news. Actually, we've been watching The Handmaid's Tale on Hulu, which he's finding, like, we can get through, like, two episodes before we're like, nope, I'm, I'm, I'm rage hard out. Yeah, that, that's, that's kind of what's been when pushing me away from... And the thing is, like, he's getting all upset. I'm like, you don't even have a uterus. What happened to you? So, you know, where does I go? And he was like, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure I have enough guns. Spoiler alert. He has enough guns. And I'm like, listen, you could probably make some type of incendiary device out of at least 16 things in this house right now. Like you could probably blow up New Jersey just with shit we've got laying around the house. I think we're cool. Like, it'd be like Home Alone as directed by Zack Snyder. I kind of want to see that movie. I know, right? <clears throat> the, the, the news plus watching Handmaid's Tale is turning him into a little bit of a survivalist nut, is what I'm saying. I, I, and so I, we might have to back off and watch some, I don't know, fucking 
friends or something for a while. I've heard such good things about Handmaid's Tale, but with everything that's actually going on in the real world, I'm just like, I can't do it. I can't. It's it's excellent. It's really well done. It's accurate to the novel with expansions, but it's also fucking horrifying. If and if they you put watch it out, CNN like... all day, where erectile dysfunction isn't a pre-existing condition, but rape is, and then you watch some Handmaid's Tale, you're like, no, seriously, this is going to happen in 10 years. If, if it came out like four years ago, I would be all over it. But right now, I'm just like, I need, please, I, oh please. I need to escape from the horror. Please, please. Oh. Tara moved to New Jersey. Dude, Tara's been in Jersey for three years now. Yeah. I moved to a different part of New Jersey like two weeks ago. I moved to a really white part of New Jersey. Well, so speaking of, of horrors that, that we wish. That's not why I moved here. Yeah. I just realized how that probably sounded. It just happens to be a really white part of New Jersey. That's not why we picked it. It actually weirds me out. Anyway. 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 Now that we've angered the YouTube commenters. Yay! Now it's time for a different... I have a poster that I got to put in my shot. I haven't hung it up yet. It's Wonder Woman wearing that Ask Me About My Feminist Agenda shirt and giving the finger. Nice. I'm just going to hang that right in my shot so that we'll just shorthand it for the YouTubers. There we go. All right. Now for something completely different. Well, no, this is this is still horrible. This is still awful. Everything is awful. Um, here we go. Get the intro going. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go on the worldwide interweb, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call Crazy. What the fuck is wrong with you? And, uh,. Uh, oh, you missed this one. That, that's right. Uh, we had um, Luke was filling in for you when this happened. This is a sequel. Yes, this is one of those you gotta watch, kids. You you gotta watch. You gotta watch them. Um, a couple weeks back, we they're had, fast. Those little fuckers. We had the the little eight year old who drove his four year old sister to McDonald's. For a cheeseburger, and he he did it perfectly. Wow! He he, he followed all the the uh, traffic laws. He got there in one piece. The 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 McDonald's people thought they were being punked. They turns out they weren't. He started crying when the police came, but he still oh, got no. his cheeseburger. Well, that's okay. That's good. You got you got to watch. Well, this didn't turn out quite well. No one was hurt, but this didn't quite turn out so well. You gotta watch fucking kids, man. Brothers age six and eight crash parents' truck at Jim Hortons. <laughs> Eight-year-old boy and his six-year-old brother escaped unharmed after they allegedly crashed their parents' truck at a Tim Hortons coffee shop in southwestern Ontario. Police say the boys took the pickup truck around 7 a.m. They were hungry for breakfast. They say the eight-year-old who was driving lost control of the vehicle in the Tim Hortons drive through Truck hopped the curb and veered into a field where it became stuck. Police say a Tim Hortons employee checked on the truck and discovered the children. <laughs> yeah. I've never been to Canada, so I've never experienced Tim Hortons. But from what I hear, it's worth it. I think Luke and I actually made a joke about the Tim Hortons. And it fucking happened. Is this going to be our new thing? Like little kids driving to the fast food joint? Feed your children. No, it's the age you got to watch kids. Yeah. If you take your eyes off. Leave kids. them something they can have for an easy breakfast. Like leave out, leave Pop-Tarts. Or when I was a kid, it was all about those little toaster muffin tops. Remember those? No. The English muffin people made them, and it was basically like a corn, you could get corn muffin or blueberry smushed down into a shape that would fit in a toaster. Like, 
Leave them something they can make so they don't drive off to the fucking Tim Hortons. <laughs> how do they reach the pet? How big are these eight-year-olds? <laughs> like, we have got to stop putting HGH in the milk. They're fucking monsters. <laughs> kids eight-year-old, they're... You, you, if you do not pay attention to kids, they will get into all sorts of shit. They'll they steal. Will. They will literally steal your fucking car. Yeah. Mad crazy shenanigans and shit. Like, mom drives? How hard can it be? Mom has two feet on you. <laughs> You'd hope. Otherwise, these are some, like, goddamn giant motherfucking eight-year-olds. That's what I'm saying. Like, how big are children now? Next. Oh, fucking. Fl you know what? There are some headlines we get on this show that are so quintessentially Florida that it's not even a surprise anymore. It's like, you're like where did that? Ha oh, yeah. OK. Yeah, that that's that's to be expected. It's we don't even blink now. It's just like it's it's fucking Florida. Naked man wielding machete in Cape Coral neighborhood arrested. Look, one false move, and you're going to take yourself right out of the gene pool, gene pool that way. Yeah, that, that is not, that is a recipe for a very bad circumcision. Yeah. Uh, that's a naked machete, a naked machete wielding man and his cousin were arrested Saturday after police. And his cousin. And his cousin. She was not naked and wielding machete. She just was laughing and pointing. Um were arrested after police received reports of a man destroying mailboxes. Um, neighbors witnessed Udir? I think I'm saying that right. Udir Duenez Sona. The website won't load for me because I have an ad blocker on. Mm. So it won't let me see the website. Udir Duenez Sosa, okay, 36, of Cape Coral, who was naked when police arrived, damaged a mailbox, and directly threatened one of the homeowners with the machete. Officers took Sosa into custody by that incident. While dealing with Sosa, Irene uh, Orozco, his cousin, also of Cape Coral, charged at officers, attempting to keep him from being taken into custody. That's not going to keep him from being taken into custody! That's just, just going to mean you get to sit next to his naked, sweaty ass in the back of the car. Yeah. Yeah, you you got to go back. Yeah. 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 That, that, yeah. You It's it's not, it's not like they don't have room for you. They do. It's not like, oh, only one per customer. No, 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 no. And, and how do you wind up? Like, and you may ask yourself, well... How did I get here? Naked, beating up mailboxes with a machete in That's Florida. Drunk, drunk. I. What the fuck are these people drinking? Because <laughs> I'm a lightweight. I'm a fucking lightweight. Like two drinks, and I'm good. And also, you... I've never been this drunk. You know, if I saw my cousin naked and smashing up mailboxes with a machete and police arrested him, I'd be like, yeah, he earned that. Thank you. You were performing a vital public service. Yeah, I, I, he my cousin and all, but yeah. That's fair. I, I don't, yeah. Not, oh no, you don't get to arrest. Yes, they do get to arrest yes, him. they do, because he's breaking the law. This is not an unjust. And he's a danger to himself and others. This is not, you know, you're not fighting against the man here. He's naked and got a machete. Yeah. I mean, at that point, that's, that's, yeah. Add a hockey mask and you got a porn parody. <laughs> I can't, I'm, I'm trying to think of, of a title now. You're making me try to think of a porn title for that one, and I can't. Bone Day the 13th? That's, that's, that's not... No, that's, that's, Friday the 13 inches? Maybe. 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 We're Now we're going to be puzzling over the... Jesus. Jason XXX is popular in the chat. That yeah. seems kind of 
obvious though. Yeah. Jason Horkies. Friday the 69th. Okay, I, I, that that one. You're getting into the spirit of this now. Yeah. Oh, God. All right. So, next up, this is one of those... I can... You can be very frustrated with... <gasps> but instead of a machete, he has a giant dildo. <laughs> It rapes itself. We're describing this, and it probably already exists, but... Probably. There there are moments you have... Dealing with other people is n quite often never fun, because other yeah. people have their own agendas, and quite often those agendas are at odds with Is it you. is it Sartre that said, hell is other people? Yeah. It's a good quote. Um, and... This is why we have institutions like the police. If someone is doing something that is not good, you have a recourse in our society you can call upon. And to be yes. fair, this gentleman did in fact call upon the police, except with an asterisk, I guess is the best way to put it. Salem store owner, employee charged with vandalizing cars. Now, let's get into this. The owner of a local convenience store is charged with vandalizing several cars parked in front of his business. Uh, Yogesh Patel, 36, uh, owner of m and Borderline Discount, uh, called authorities on Friday and reported multiple cars parked illegally in front of his store. Okay, great. That's exactly how you handle this. Perfectly fair. Except. That's not the end of the story, is it? Police arrived to find 10 cars in the parking lot had one or more tires deflated. Upon further investigation, officers determined Patel and store employees called police to report the parked cars, then walked outside and drilled holes into more than 20 tires. While investigating the incident, police say they recovered surveillance video footage from the store, from his own store, that shows the two men vandalizing cars and the drill they used they were both arrested okay you see you had what you could have taken one of these options you could have right. called the police or vandalized the cars taking both of these options maybe not both yeah yeah like call the police bueno you're on your way to a good solution vandalize the cars Probably not the best way to go, but effective. Sends a message. Calling the police and then vandalizing the cars is basically turning yourself in. Yeah, because the the because you tell police there are cars parked illegally, they are all over that because that is cash money. That's money. They That's love free that. money. They love that shit. They are going to be your friend. But if you they fucking love parking tickets, that shit's free money. But now what they don't have to deal with any drunken naked idiot to get that money. Now you know what you've done? By vandalizing the cars, you have fucked it all up. Now they can't get the money. Now it's a police report on every single car. Now it's paperwork. Now they gotta take your ass to jail. Yeah. They're not your friend anymore. They're not. It's, you have and you called the cops when you were doing something. You called them on yourself, you idiot. Yeah. Why do people do that? Last week we had the dude who called the cops because he this got his heroin got stolen. It's, it's I mean uh... It's like legal Darwinism. <laughs> well what were they gonna do? He's gonna be like, hey, guess what? Not only are they parked illegally, they fucked up. Uh huh? Uh, yeah, what? somebody, somebody just fucked up all these cars while they were in my lot. I mean, damn. I guess that's symbolic retribution. No. I mean, I'm you are not the criminal mastermind you think you are. And have to get caught on video by his own security <laughs> You didn't even turn your cameras off. You know you have them. <laughs> you know you even know where they are. <laughs> Just turn them off. Mm. Delete the tape. Yes. They're yours. Uh. 
it's like it's like i would love to sit this guy down and be like do you know where you went wrong here let's let's go over <laughs> step by step and see if we can work out where our little story took a turn uh speaking of a little story taking a turn um i am the guy who reads directions I, I, I know lots of, uh, there's the classic stereotype of the, I can just do this. I don't have to read. Yeah, I don't think you're supposed to admit that in public. No, I read the instructions because you know what? Sometimes other people know better than me. It's... Okay. You're just, you're just straight up female right now. Like everybody on the internet is like, cook. But, and there are times when you gotta read the instructions you gotta read this the stuff because if you don't um well small iowa bridge collapses under weight of grain truck and i want to point out in this picture very clearly is posted the instructions on this it says wait oh, no. <laughs> what? it's right there weight limit three tons Officials say a small county-owned bridge in northeast Iowa has collapsed after a semi-trailer weighing more than, than 10 times the bridge's weight limit drove that is 30, 30 tons. tons. I mean, who hasn't lied about their weight? <laughs> who hasn't been like, yeah, I totally weigh 150, sure. County engineer uh, Lee... Berserk? Is it? Lee Jerk? Berserk? Uh, Either way, that, that's a great name. Berserk? Bjerk? Bjerk? I'm inclined Bjerk. to say Bjerk. Lee Bjerk. If you get the BG, it's usually a Bjerk. What is playing? Stop it. Autoplay, yay! Counting engineer Lee Bjerk says the collapse happened early Friday morning. It's not even that story. It's a story about a bear. <laughs> Bjerk says the small bridge had a weight limit of three tons and about the weight of a pickup truck. Sign warning of the span's limit was clearly posted. Bjerk say a loaded grain truck estimated more than 30 tons tried to cross it, causing the collapse. No one was injured. <sighs> It'll be fine. I'm sure. 30 is more than three. Yeah, way, 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 way more, way more than, way, way more than, way more than three. That That's kind of one of those basic, that's one of those basic things you learn. That's like, what, second grade, maybe? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that, that's early on. I just, like, think, that's a short bridge, I can make it. And you know what happened was, once he got on the bridge and the bridge started making noises, he thought, well, just power through. If I go really fast, this will be fine. They do it in movies all the time. Right. That movie Speed? Yep. They took a fucking city bus over like a hole in the freeway just by going fast enough. Right. It's physics. So if I just go faster, and not back up and get the fuck off this bridge. Everything will be fine. Perfect. What? Speed counteracts gravity. I just, god damn. Which I guess is true at high enough speeds, but I don't think your 30 ton gray truck, grain truck is gonna reach those speeds. And how do you explain this to the person whose cargo you're hauling? You got a you got a creek full of oatmeal now. <laughs> a lot of pissed off fish. <laughs> well, the bad news is I wrecked the truck. The good news is if you head downtown with some brown sugar right now, <laughs> maybe some raisins, free breakfast for everybody. Oh. Oh, this next also one. great for the skin. Like just hop in. Really good for the skin, really soothing. Uh, this next one, I this 
This makes me a little sad for, like, poisonous snakes. That is so weird. Yeah, not really. That's not really a demographic I often feel a lot of sympathy for. I kind of do, because fuck this guy. I it's, And also, what the fuck were you thinking? Man arrested at airport with snakes, frogs, and lizards in backpack. Oh, Russian en route from Brazil detained in Amsterdam after reptiles and cockroaches found in buckets in luggage. Custom, oh. Custom officials have arrested a Russian man at Amsterdam's international airport after dozens of poisonous snakes and frogs were found hidden in his luggage. A man who was en route to Russia was detained at a stopover uh, Dutch food and animal watchdog uh, said on Wednesday there were dozens of live snakes, frogs, cockroaches, and lizards hidden in his luggage. A large number of these animals are extremely poisonous. The find included 26 highly poisonous lancehead vipers, 10 poisonous frogs, 33 cockroaches, and rare lizards. The animals. And a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> animals were stashed in plastic bags buckets with lids and placed in the man's backpack. This is a recipe for a shitty movie. Yeah, like with Samuel L. Jackson on this flight? I know, he's just, do you want snakes on a plane? Because this is how you get snakes on a plane. And cockroaches and frogs, oh my. All one of those buckets had to be was just slightly askew. And Here's what happened. Oh God. Here's what happened. Oh God. It's this dude is John Constantine, and he managed, like, the demon that was all made out of vermin, he managed to break it up into a bunch of, like, warded jars, and was just going to leave those jars all over the world, starting in Russia, obviously, so that the vermin demon couldn't reconstitute itself. But thanks to the TSA, now the vermin demon's going to be just fine. Yeah, thanks you, you, you cracked the case there, Tara. You, you, yeah. you nailed that one. That's they should solved. hire me. Yeah, we should we should call Interpol. Grady, could you not fuck with the green screen while I'm on the show, buddy? Please, thank you. I don't have Peggy and Dottie antics anymore. Like, I gotta get a little tower or something because there's nothing of theirs in this room, so they don't really hang out in here. Like, while I'm in here, they'll like poke in, but Grady, what did I just say? You the said minute, to don't do the thing, so I'm going to do the thing. The minute I look away from him, he starts doing it again. He's like a, he's like a toddler. He's a cat. So, yes. <laughs> I told you what happened the Stop day it. Miracle got diagnosed with cancer, right? No. One of the few bad things Miracle ever used to do was she used to scratch on the carpet on the stairs. Uh-huh. Dan would yell at her, and she's... She was deaf, so it didn't matter, and then he'd go over and shoo her away. The night she got diagnosed with cancer, she walks away, and all of a sudden we hear the scratching noise. Just stop it! <laughs> and we look over, and she's looking right at Dan and scratching, like, what are you going to do about it? I'm dying. I have cancer. You going to yell at me? I don't think you are. They're cats. Grady? No. <laughs> don't, don't look at he's like flopping on his back like I'm cute. Stop it. Really? Look how cute I am. Stop it. I, I don't want to. Little shit. Oh. And then they give you the big eyes and you're like, okay. We have another one of these stories to end tonight. God damn it. God damn it. How does how does not not even my show. Not even saying my show should be the vector for teaching people. <laughs> but how, like, why am I teaching sex ed and criminal intent on the fucking internet? How? What? How? Do I am you, not equipped for either of those things. You would think these stories happen enough times and get covered by enough media outlets that people it would click that maybe I shouldn't do the thing because of the news. However, no, no, it does not. Because um, someone get the tally board. It happened to Grady. <laughs> it 
happened again. Look how cute I am. Man sets fire to smoke out <laughs> a possum's burns own house down. In his defense, they are mean little fuckers. Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania man trying to scare away a possum's by setting a fire has destroyed his home. LNP reports that row house blaze on Wednesday in Lancaster began when a man used butane to light a pile of leaves in his backyard. The man apparently hoped the smoke would help rid him of the marsupials, which are known for playing dead. Someone's padding out their word count there. Yeah. City fire marshal says the fire got out of control, spread to the home, which was built of wood. Someone is definitely padding their fucking word count here. I... Stop with the fire! Stop <laughs> with... The... There... There are places you can go before fire. We have said this... You can do what they would do when Dan was growing up and bring it in as a pet. He had a pet raccoon as a kid. I'm sure he's going to come stomping in here and yell at me because he's watching. He had a pet raccoon as a kid. So, a pet possum, not that beyond the pale. But they're mean little fuckers, so I don't recommend them. Excuse me. Live, everybody. Um... <laughs> But it just, it, do, I, I, we've said this before, do, when the Orkin man pulls up to your house, do you see him go straight to the flamethrower? No. I In have, fact, I don't even think they equip them with flamethrowers anymore. <laughs> I've, I've, I've never seen any extermination service offer fire. As one of their services. I've never, it's I've not never, that efficient. It's because, you know what? Fire is not, is fire is a lot like Grady. It doesn't listen when you tell it to do things. <laughs> Dan says, in that man's defense, he does have an incident with a squirrel. That is true. Dan ended up in the ER trying to get a squirrel out of a pipe once. No, I wasn't there for that, but yeah. My dad caught a possum in one of his squirrel, trap one, squirrel traps once, and I got within, like, five feet, and it pissed at me and started gnawing on the metal, and I was like, okay, possums dad's are, dealing with you. Possums you are fuckers. not just mean. They have all of the balls. A little story. Yeah. Here's one of my only anecdotes from back in the day. Um, I had a Ford Mustang when I was in high school, and I was just getting used to driving around. I was, I was uh, driving, I think I was coming back from, like, an after-school thing. And on the road was a possum. So I'm like, okay, I'll slow down because I don't want to hit this poor woodland creature. And I, I, I slow down and I'm like, well, he'll get out of the way. No, no. I had to come <laughs> to a dead stop. There's a possum in my headlights. He's there for like two seconds. He's like, come get some. And then the little bastard launches himself at my front tire oh my God. and started attacking it. Wow. I, I even got out of the car. I went to, this is probably not a smart thing to do. I got, I went to look and he's like, I, 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 I. he didn't pay any attention to me. He's just like, fuck you. Fuck you, car. Fuck you. It's my house. Fuck Clearly you. your car wronged him in a past life. Possums are like crazy. You, you don't, this is call a goddamn professional. Yeah. Don't Please say tell me that Dan didn't try and turn the pipe into a squirrel cannon. No! <laughs> he had a squirrel living in a pipe, and he tried to remove it, and it got loose in the house, and then fucked his shit right up. <laughs> he lost a fight with a squirrel. Wait. Your husband got his ass kicked by a squirrel? Yes. <laughs> He tried to catch it by hand. <laughs> and that didn't work out. <laughs> I really can't believe he hasn't come stomping down the hall and yell at me yet. You know we're playing the Mississippi Squirrel Revival. You know we're playing that song. I don't know what that means. You do not know Ray Stevens' Mississippi Squirrel Revival? Do I look like I would know? Ray you Steve will. Mississippi Squirrel Revival? You will very soon. You will, because now we have to. But Is that like the 
otter jug band Christmas thing? No, 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 no. It's 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 worse. Um, it's, it's, yeah, the first thing we learned this week, guys. If you're dealing with an infestation in your home, fire's not your go-to. <clears throat> It's it's not it's 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 not your friend. No. Fire. It shouldn't be your first answer. Certainly, like try something else first. Yes. Try banging some pots together. Anything. You know. Try leaving a trail of food to your neighbor's yard. Hey, there you go. Give your gay, your your neighbors the gift of wildlife. <laughs> like, d don't go straight to fire. Don't don't fire is the fire will kill the thing, but it will also kill your house. Yeah, fire is like the last resort. Yeah, you you never see the exterminator go. Oh well, okay. Bring out the fire! No, they don't do Oh, that. yeah, you got, you, got, you got some mice in your walls. Let me get my flamethrower. We've learned that, um, you know, there are lots of ways to acquire uh, uh, exotic wildlife. Uh, one of them is not taking them on a plane in a bucket. No. They don't like that. They don't like that so much that if you haven't been really, really careful with that bucket... They're not going to be happy with you. <laughs> they're not going to, even if you have been careful with the bucket, yeah. they're not going to be happy with you. We, I think happy is just not on the table. We've learned some remedial math this week. We've learned that three is less than 30. Third. It's like fucking Sesame Street here. Three is less than 30. Uh, we've learned that... If you're going to call the police because someone else has done something illegal, don't compound the shit by doing something illegal yourself. Yeah. Maybe refrain from doing something illegal until after the police have gone. Well, no, don't do the illegal thing. You should be. At least not, a, like, you know, wait till they're gone. Um... At least. We have learned that if your cousin is getting arrested, for being naked and waving around a large blade, maybe you should just step back and, and give the cops that one. Yeah. Because uh, I think they're in the right there. That's a that's a pick your battle situation. That's right. That's, yeah. That's. And finally, we've learned you gotta watch your damn kids because they will steal your car. Yeah. We're not talking about your teenage kids. We're talking about your goddamn toddlers. Your fucking toddlers will steal your car and go to the drive through Also, buy your kids... May, either don't get your kids fast food at all so they don't get inclined to steal the car to go through... Or if you're going to take the fast food route, make sure you dole that out liberally so they're not inclined to steal your goddamn car. Or just leave them food. That they can have. I don't know. I'm. You know what? I would steal a car. Cereal for, box of cereal. I no no. I I would, I would steal a car for Tim Hortons. I gotta say that. See, I've never had Tim Hortons, so again, I don't know. One day, one day, Tara, you're you're going to experience Tim Hortons, and you're going to sit there, and you're going to be in the Tim Hortons, and you're going to be basking in the Canadian glow, and you're going to say to yourself, you know what? I would steal a car for this. Do you think there's a Freddy versus Jason porn parody? 